Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large block rover, but this time this doubles as an exploration ship, if that's what you want to do with it. So this is called the Fugitive Prince Mechanida, which is this lovely thing that I'm currently standing on. So this features everything we need to survive in survival mode, from a full-on assembler and a full-on large block refinery, to a small little ship for exploration, we've got a large block medical bay, we even have a special arm which you can see right here that can fold all the way out, and connect up that small connector to whatever you need to connect up to, like a small ship, a base, or whatever. And of course, like I said, we've got plenty of thrusters all the way around this, hydrogen thrusters, so we can, if we don't want to roll around on these wheels, just activate them and scoot around as if the wheels did not exist. So anyway, what we can do is just put the camera like so, here we are, press F10, find it in the spawn menu, the Fugitive Prince is 1,415 large blocks, using pretty much all the DLC packs. We've got a nice bit of information about it, such as the lore behind it, as well as a little thing up here that apparently this has been a victim of a wave of downvoting, so please don't do that. Anyway, down to here we've got our specifications, it does use a few scripts, which is how the arm's going to be functioning, and down to here is everything you can do, including use a jump drive. Giving it a thumbs up, which I already have, we're going to move around towards the very front, oh, we'll look, around the outside, we can also take a tour of the interior, drive it around for a bit, fly it around for a bit, and I think that'll be that. But before I actually go around the outside, what I will do is show you that arm on the side, because it's rather spectacular of how it all works. So coming all the way down to here, there's our small little ship to drive around, which we'll do later on. Opening up this, through here, and dropping down here. Got lost for a second there. Anyway, opening up this, now on the inside, we come into here, tab number three, take over number one, put the free camera onto the side so we can actually clearly see the arm, and there it is. Now taking over this once again, we can move this around. Here we go. It's going to be a little bit odd because it does move the entire vehicle. But once we're happy with this, because we're moving this with the mouse, so all directions, and moving it up and down will rotate it. We can then use W and S to now extend it all the way out. Here we are. The camera back a little bit. Once we're happy with it, we can then use A and D to now rotate this end section, which features a spotlight and a small connector to once again precisely put it to where we need it to be able to connect up to whatever we want to connect up to. Anyway, hopping out of this, grabbing hold of the free camera once again, run towards the very front, this is where we get for the Fugitive Prince, and that's four hydrogen thrusters to help slow this thing down when we're in flight mode. Putting on my light moving a bit closer, we then got two interior turrets for a bit of defense from the front, which is always useful because you never know what you can be fighting. We also see a spotlight to help light up the darkness, then the start of many wheels to go all the way around the bottom, to use in rover form. If we get a bit closer over here, we've got a bunch of rusted, unfinished steel blocks to go all the way up the middle of these hydrogen thrusters, which sort of acts as a little guard, a little bump guard, in case you do run into a random rock. Putting away from there, move around onto the side, past these steel blocks in lovely white and black colouring. We'll eventually come across to the side that has our arm, which we just went through. We do have some lovely half armor steel blocks, just act as a little thin grid going all the way along. There's a little camera that we use to view the arm to make sure we're all properly connected up. There's some hydrogen thrusters for our left and right. There's a large antenna dish to make sure we can always find this thing. Then over to here, we've got ourselves a large wheel at the very back that we can use to land down on, just in case we are going to do a hard landing and need something to absorb all the impact. Here we're around towards the very back of the thing. We've got a bunch of conveyor tubes. Come across some more hydrogen thrusters to give us a nice lot of speed when boosting this thing around. There's a sneaky little heat vent sitting behind those two hydrogen thrusters. Then at the very back here, this is what's going to push us around. We've got ourselves eight small hydrogen thrusters, two large ones, which should be bloody fast at the end of the day. Putting my light on, moving all the way up. Got some more steel plates to cover up the backs of those hydrogen thrusters. Then we can see the start of a couple of hydrogen engines to get a bit of power. Moving all the way along, we've got some more conveyor tubes linking everything together. There's a little conveyor cap sitting on the end of some more conveyor tubes. More hydrogen thrusters to move us down. On the left-hand side, an antenna to make sure we don't always find this thing. There's a small little vehicle we went past at the very start. And along to here, we've got our lovely solar panels for some renewable power. Moving towards the front, there we are, we see a sneaky little air vent, like an auction from the surrounding areas. And not too much else. Moving all the way down underneath this thing, here we go. So we can see how that's all been set up. Over onto this section, we see our spotlight, as well as another air vent, this is like an oxygen. Then moving all the way along, we see how our wheel suspensions have been protected up by some armoured panels. More hydrogen thrusters lift you off the ground. There's a ladder on one side to be able to get up onto the chip without using your jetpack. And over there is a little connection point, just in case you want to use it that way, or perhaps you're on foot repairing this up, or building your own ship, and you want to be able to access the interior cargo to pull out resources. Moving towards the back, there is our jump drive, more hydrogen thrusters, a couple of parachutes just in case you need them, and there's the large hydrogen thrusters at the very back. 
Now we have to move around onto this side, putting off my light, we don't really need it. And here we are. So instead of having our large antenna dish, what we got is a small interior turret for a bit more defense. There's our wonky antenna sitting up there. There's an ore detector. And along to this side, we've got a lovely guardrail made out of some rusted catwalks, just to make sure you don't accidentally fall off. And of course, keep that little ship safely inside, just in case you do forget to lock down the magnetic plates. Moving a bit closer, there's some barrels store a few bits and bobs inside. More hydrogen thrusters, so do stay clear of that with the ship. And over to this part, nothing too fancy here, just a very novel thing to go out of bounce scout for all patches. We do have all detector sitting right up there, but we can also use this to go and scout out nearby locations, just in case it is a pirate outpost nearby, and you want to view the area for bringing your rover all the way over. Anyway, for the rest of this area, we've got a button panel to control a few bits and bobs, such as the lights. And all of that, there's another panel, there's a reactor just in case you've got access to some uranium. There's a lovely spotlight just shining down onto that ship. Pulling away from here and towards the very front, it's about the same as the opposite side. And there we go, that is that for the outside of the Fugitive Prince. It looks bloody fantastic how it's all been set up. It's a very useful ship overall, because you don't really see too many rovers that can double as a ship. You don't really see too many vehicles that use a proper arm to go and stretch out and connect up to whatever you want to connect up to. Usually people just go for pistons, and that's usually a good idea at the end of the day, but this is much more fancier and a bit more fun to play around with. But now what I'm going to do is make sure my character is not sitting in the seat, and plop them all the way down onto the ground, because it's time to find that ladder and get up in the inside. So walking all the way past this section, past all of our lovely hydrogen thrusters on the ground, and there is the ladder to be able to get all the way up. So that ladder is going to take us up and inside, oop, what happened there? Yes, that ladder is going to take us all the way up and inside, which is take us to our little airlock system that we saw at the very start, so let's go into the cockpit. So that's the doorway on the inside. Moving all the way over to here, armory locker, air vent, ladder that comes all the way up. And we come through here, open that up, close that up, and now on the section for our small little ship. So over here is our button panel where we can control the lights. We then turn the turrets on and off. We then got our all detector on and off. Then we've got our antenna on and off, just in case we want to do that from the outside. As for the small little ship, it's an atmospheric thruster only ship, and it's powered by batteries, so we're only going to be able to get about 20 minutes of power out of this thing, so we can't go too far away from the rover, but it's certainly suitable for finding all patches, like I said, going over the stations. Round towards the back, there's our small little beacon. Round to there, there's our lovely little barrel where we can store a few bits and bobs inside if we needed to. There's of course our gyroscope, there's some more of our atmospheric thrusters, and I think I'll just hop into here and actually drive it around. So hopping into this, putting on the power, undoing all of that, and now it's time to lift it away. It's a very weird ship to play around with, because it feels like it should be very lightweight, but due to the way it's all been set up, it's quite a meaty ship. We also fly it around, it's very slow to move around, moving forwards we are a bit faster, and of course slowing down a bit faster than left and right. But still, certainly suitable for driving around here and looking for precious resources, and going to wherever we need to go. So that can now just fly off in the distance with a ton of power, hop out of there, and fly away from it, and come back to the rover and go on the inside. So here we are, dropping all the way down. Now we just walk around, come to the interior. We do have a survival kit on the outside, just in case we do want to go all the way on the inside to recharge ourselves. Very handy if you want to respawn out here, say if you want to come out, want to quickly shoot down a drone. But opening up the doorway, here we go, past this, dropping all the way down once again. Now it's time to come into here. Of course, we can't open up that door until that door's fully closed up, thanks to a script. On the inside, closing that up, this is the first room we get. So on the right hand side we've got a kitchen block with a table and chair to sit on. There's our air vent to make sure we don't suffocate. Around to this side a little bed to sleep on. Looking up there, there's one of our angled interior walls. And onto this section we then access the back of our small cargo container. If you just want to pull stuff out or put stuff inside. There's our cockpit to drive this thing around. And the only problem with the ship with this cockpit design is of course you can't see from the outside from first person view. So you will need to slap on a camera if you want to do that. Anyway, opening up this doorway, we now come to the back of the ship. We've got a very frosty cryopod, and we've got a full-on medical bay to recharge ourselves, and of course change our outfit and tool skins. And this side, shower and toilet. Another event, to make sure we don't suffocate. And above us is our full-scale assembler. We can build up everything we need. We would have come into here and type in refinery. There we are, there's our full-on refinery, where we do have yield modules on all the slots. So it'll be very good in survival mode. As for this area, opening it up, time to hop into the cockpit and go through the controls. So in tab number one, this is going to be all about our thrusters and while turning them all off. We also got some wheels for our controls, but not going to touch them. We also have antenna and ore detector, our interior turrets on and off, and our thrusters once again. But moving on to tab number two, this is going to be our primary controller. Where we've got our thrusters to turn them on all the way around the ship. See now we're kicking up a nice little smoke, and we can pull this up off the ground and drive it around like a ship. 
Now I come back over to tab number one, turn everything off, and now we're back onto the ground. Anyway, for the other controls, we then got our gravity generator on and off, very handy when we're in space. They got a jump drive to activate that. We only got one of these on here, so we can only jump 2,000 kilometers. Six for your ore detector once again, seven for your antenna, number eight is then for your turret, turn that on and off. Then number nine is for your parachutes, just in case you're running out of hydrogen and you're plummeting towards the planet surface. Anyway, over to tab number three, this is what we saw at the very start of the video, where number one's going to be to control that arm on the side there, to lift that all the way up, and of course extend all the way out, depending on what we want to do. Leaving it as so and coming out there, pressing number two throughout spotlight right next to it, so we see the poorly done job of me putting that all the way back to how it was. Anyway, we use this to look around here, get a good view of what's going on. Hopping out here and pressing number three, this could be for your small connector on the end of that arm. Number four is then for your large refinery to turn that on and off. Number five is for your batteries to auto or recharge. Number six for your hydrogen tanks to stop power on and off. Number seven for your hydrogen engines to turn them on and off. Number eight is then for your reactors if you have access to uranium. And number nine is for your antenna dish to turn that on and off. Over to tab number four, we've got nothing else and nothing else for the other tabs. So it's time to drive this thing around and see how it handles. And hopefully it won't end up like the one in the distance there, 400 kilometers away, to have a little accident and, well, explode it into little pieces. Yes, driving this thing around, it feels exceptionally slow, but it's not. This thing is actually surprisingly speedy on both the ground and when we're flying around with the hydrogen thrusters. You want to be very careful to make sure this vehicle does not tip up backwards, because it will very quickly destroy those large hydrogen thrusters, which will severely limit the speed you can fly around with. As you can see here, we are doing very well going at 80 meters per second. That is kind of a bit of a risky speed, so it might be a good idea to limit the wheels at about 40 meters per second, because that's always safe, and well, should do very well on pretty much every planet and every moon. It will bring this to a stop, now coming to tab number two, put on the thrusters, put on the parking brakes, and lift this all the way up. As you can see, we just drive this around like a proper little ship. It's going to be about the same as it was on the ground, but it feels very slowly. It feels like we're not actually making too much speed or too much ground distance, but it's bloody fast because we just shot up to 100 meters per second. Now we're scooting around, ready to go up into space and off on our journey. It would have come to a stop, it is a little bit slower as moving forwards, but we do just about have enough gyroscope controls to 180 to stop it a bit quicker, ignoring all the smoke coming off this. But there we are, we now stop it a little bit quicker and it does tend to follow through with your mouse turning due to how heavy this thing is. But there we are with that. And of course, if we want to, we now activate our parachutes. Hopefully they'll stop in time. Tab number one, turn off all of them. And now we can very gently come down to the ground, making sure we don't land on the back too heavily, because like I said, we will lose those hydrogen thrusters. And looks like we're going to lose them anyway. And there they go. So now we can come back over to here, close them up. We're now landed onto the ground, undo the parking brakes, now it's time to drive this thing around properly. And of course, if you want to, you can come over to tab number one and activate the rear hydrogen thrusters, get yourself a bit more speed while driving around. Very useful if you are, very heavy and full up with goods, or if you just want to, say, escape any kind of enemy drones or any kind of enemy enemies to spawn in your world. But as for that, that is pretty much it for the Fugitive Prince has offer. It's a lovely little vehicle to use in your world if you want to have, say, a jack of all trades vehicle that's ready for survival mode and should do very well in no matter what conditions you put it in. Sure, there is a severe lack of guns all the way around this. You mainly got your guns on the front and on the back. So if you do want to have a bit more protection, it might be a good idea to have a few more guns on top. That's entirely up to you at the end of the day. So be linked to the description below to download and play around with yourself. Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.